This is one of the most popular continuous glucose monitors, the Dexcom G7. And it just received major upgrades that you should know about. Because they might take your experience with this bad boy to the next level. So in this video we're gonna look at what upgrades Dexcom recently announced, how they will make your life easier and what exactly you need to do to take full advantage of these upgrades. But here is the thing, I have even more details about Dexcom that I want to share with you, including things that were not exactly officially announced and latest rumors about the new generation of Dexcom sensors, Dexcom G8. Let's get into it. Starting with upgrade number one, one of those that were not promoted at all. But if you recently got a new batch of Dexcom G7s, you might have noticed that something was different. And the Dexcom CEO spilled the beans about this top secret upgrade in a recent interview. Now most of us who used the G7 before probably noticed that the adhesive was not very sticky. I even complained a bit about my sensor peeling off in my G7 review video. But here is the deal, when it comes to adhesives it's not so easy to find a balance between something that is sticky enough and something that will be sensitive to everyone's skin, not causing any skin irritations or allergic reactions. But I have good news for you. According to the CEO Kevin Sayer, Dexcom has tested plenty of adhesive solutions and they were finally able to come up with a new one that's stickier but not too aggressive. Now unfortunately there is no clear timeline on this upgrade, so some of you might be already using the new adhesive and some of you might get it in one of your next batches of Dexcom G7. But my guess is that it should not take very long for everyone to get this new adhesive. By the way, what do you think of the Dexcom G7 adhesive? Is it good enough? Let me know in the comments down below. Moving on to upgrade number two, and this one is much bigger than the adhesive. You see the G7 sensor was going out of range more frequently than the G6, and this was a bit annoying because it used to take at least five minutes for the sensor to reconnect. But Dexcom recently announced that they massively enhanced the Bluetooth connection configuration and fixed the signal loss issue. And this was done in two ways. Number one, hardware. There is now a stronger antenna in each sensor that can reach further. Therefore, the Bluetooth range increased by 65% from 20 feet to 33 feet, or from 6 to 10 meters to be exact. By the way, this exactly matches the reach of Freestyle Libre 3, so I assume Abbott can no longer say in their commercials that they have the best reach of all CGMs. But Dexcom didn't only improve the hardware, they improved the software as well. The new feature they introduced is called Rapid Reconnect. And this new feature will allow the sensor to reconnect faster in case you go out of range. Whenever that happens, the G7 app will try to reconnect every minute, which too sort of resembles Freestyle Libre, where the readings update every 60 seconds, no matter what. Now you might be asking, how do I know that my sensor already has the enhanced Bluetooth configuration? Well, honestly, I don't know this 100%, but rumor has it that you can tell this by the LBL number. Some people say that it needs to be ref 0, 10 and higher for the number that's not underlined and if your number is underlined that it needs to be a ref 0, 0, 004 and higher. To be honest I'm not really sure and I don't want to spread any misinformation but my gut feeling is that you should be receiving the upgraded version from your distributor from now on. Next upgrade number three has been a long time coming and this one is a true game changer because Dexcom G7 is now direct to watch. It took a long time but they finally did it. In the past the data from the sensor went to your phone and your phone fed them to the watch. In fact no CGM company has ever done direct to watch before. But the Dexcom G7 now does have a dedicated Bluetooth connection between your watch and the sensor, totally independent of your phone. That's a big deal because you can now leave your phone at home and head out for a run or to play outside with your kid with just the watch on your wrist. And you will still have both real-time glucose data and alerts available, of course. I also expect direct to watch will be more timely and more reliable compared to any kind of complication showing the blood sugar number or third-party solution that you might have had on your watch before that was running through your phone. Now Dexcom's COO Jake Leach said in the recent interview that this new feature should have no to minimal impact on the watch battery life. Well, let's see about that. But what I find really cool about Dexcom G7 is that you have an independent connection between the sensor and up to three devices at the same time. Your watch, your phone and your reader or your insulin pump. No other CGM can do that. 
I'll talk about the exact insulin pump models that integrate with Dexcom G7 a little bit later in this video because I have some interesting updates for you on this topic as well. But before we all get too excited, there are several things you need for Direct to Watch to work. So please pay attention here. First of all, you need Dexcom G7 app version 2.2.1 or later. So go to settings, check what version you currently have and update if needed. Right now, Direct to Watch only works with Apple. You need Apple Watch 6 or later with Watch iOS 10 or later. And you need an iPhone running iOS 17 or later. To connect the G7 sensor directly with your Apple Watch, open the G7 phone app, go to Connections, Direct to Watch, and then follow the on-screen instructions. Unfortunately, my Apple Watch 4 is too old and I need to upgrade if I want to use Direct to Watch feature. And I probably will. Next upgrade I want to talk about is a new sensor replacement policy. Well, it's not exactly an upgrade, but it's something that people seem to have sort of mixed feelings about. So I want to clarify on what exactly is happening here. The main controversy was caused by the fact that the new sensor replacement policy basically limits the number of free replacement sensors that either fall off or need to be removed for a procedure, like MRI scan, for example. If such a thing happens, Dexcom limits the number of so-called goodwill free replacement placement to 3 for Dexcom G6 and G7 users and 2 for Dexcom 1 users. And this got a bunch of people upset because Dexcom never really had such official policy for this before. And I get it, some people might knock off more than two or three sensors in a year if they get unlucky. Or they might have a few procedures like MRI scheduled within a short period of time. It can happen. But in my opinion, there is no need to go ballistic about it with Dexcom because they will still replace any sensor that fail during the intended 10 day life Time. And I can imagine that they will most likely assess any exceptional situations on a case by case basis. But the general rule of thumb I use is if my sensor fails, I want to be in a position to be able to use the following script when I call the support. My sensor failed or stopped working. It was on my upper arm or abdomen, depending on what the approved site is in my region and provide the sensor serial number. Please don't abuse the system and I'm pretty sure you will have no issues. And by the way, this is not an approved site for Dexcom G7. Just saying, I'm not perfect. Now that we covered the controversial stuff, let's talk about something exciting. Another update to the Dexcom G7 app. If you watched my Dexcom G7 review, you will probably remember that there is a handy feature where you can add events like insulin, meal or activity in the Dexcom G7 app. And this feature has improved because you can now add specific medication other than insulin. I think this feature will be helpful, especially for those of you who are on metformin or GLP-1 drugs like Vigovi or Ozempic. You'll be able to track all these things directly in the Dexcom G7 app and have a better view how all these factors improve your blood sugar graph. Now, before we get to Dexcom G8 rumors, I want to quickly talk about upgrade number six, which is integration of more insulin insulin pumps. Dexcom G7 is already compatible with Tandem's T-Slim X2, Tandem Mobi and Omnipod 5. For Omnipod 5 specifically, you need those pods that have a G7 logo on the box. And Omnipod should send you an email once these pods are available in all pharmacies. So depending on what country you're in, you might have a choice of up to three insulin pumps and two algorithms. Plus DYI solutions, of course, if you choose to go that route out, which is something I'm doing right now, by the way, and I'm very happy with it. I will talk a bit more about it in another video. There will probably also be more commercial solutions added in the future. We just don't know what exact pumps and when. Now that we covered all the serious stuff, let's talk about something more fun. And I'm willing to bet that you didn't know about the next upgrade, number seven. Because honestly, I had no clue this was available. But Dexcom launched a design shop where you can get different styles of G6 and G7 overlays. They have plenty of styles here and you can even create your own with your face on it. Just kidding, don't put your face on it, please put mine. <laughs> Just kidding. The only problem is I was not able to test the overlays yet because they currently only seem to ship to the US. So I cannot vouch for the quality and I personally will probably stay with SkinGrip because these can ship to Switzerland and 
plenty of other countries and they're really good. Anyway, I'll put the link to the Dexcom's design shop in the description below too if you want to check it out. But now moving on to upgrade number eight, which can be nothing else but Dexcom versions outside of G7 and rumors about Dexcom G8. Currently, there are up to five Dexcom versions to choose from, depending on what country you are in or what country you are shopping in. We have Dexcom G7, Dexcom G6, which is a predecessor of G7, but I'm sure many of you still use it. But then we also have Dexcom 1 and Dexcom 1 Plus. These are both great solutions available in select markets for people who don't need insulin pump integration and advanced alerts. And then we have Dexcom Stello, a completely new sensor that Dexcom will be launching really soon in the US. Stello is a 15-day sensor that will be sold over the counter directly to people who don't need insulin. If you want to know more about Dexcom Stello and Dexcom 1, definitely hit that subscribe button and notification bell because I will soon be making a video dedicated to these two new solutions. And by the way, if you want to message me directly and ask any questions, the best way to do that is my Patreon. I respond to all messages from my patrons promptly. And if you join, you can also watch my bonus content and participate in community calls. The spots in my Patreon group are limited because I want to make sure that I have enough time to interact with all of you. I checked today and we still have about 10 spots available. So go ahead and join while you still can. But let's get back to Dexcom G8 rumors. When will this new flagship CGM arrive and what can we expect from it? When we look at when Dexcom launched the latest CGM products, in their main product line, then we can see that Dexcom G5 was launched in 2015, Dexcom G6 in 2018, and Dexcom G7 in 2022. Dexcom CEO recently indirectly confirmed that Dexcom might want to be sticking to that three-year upgrade timeline. And this kind of means that we might see Dexcom G8 really soon potentially launching in 2025 or early 26. He also confirmed that the main thing Dexcom is currently focused on is improving the sensor lifetime to 15 days and further improving the form factor of the sensor, meaning they will try to make the sensor even smaller. And this would make sense because the G7 is quite a bit bigger than their main competitor, Freestyle Libre 3, and smaller size is what attracts most of us. I'm sure Dexcom is also monitoring the situation around non-invasive CGM solutions, but right now it seems that no one is quite able to figure out how to measure the glucose reliably without putting this filament under your skin. So I'm almost certain that the Dexcom G8 will not be a non-invasive CGM. But before we know more about Dexcom G8, we kind of need to use Dexcom G7. And if you want to get the most out of your Dexcom G7, definitely check out this video where I share my top 15 tips and secrets on how I use Dexcom G7 and how I get most out of it. I will see you in that video. Ciao.